welcome to anu's classroom this video will be talking about unit 3 in mmpc 10 and it is named as basic concepts and techniques now um, from block 1 unit 1 the only major question that gets asked is what do you understand by managerial economics why is it important and things like that basic thing uh, whatever gets asked from unit 1 it will be relating to the uh, what you understand with, uh, uh, about managerial economics so you can uh, write about how you link uh, economics with decision theories what you understand by management what you understand by economics why an amalgamation of that is important in a business or for a business and things like that so it's basically more or less the same thing for any kind of a question asked from uh, unit 1 but most of the times what have what i have observed is that from block 1 the questions get asked from unit 2 and unit 3 at least one question i have almost always found to be coming from unit 3 so almost all the uh, upcoming slides in this slide deck in this video corresponds to at least one question from the previous year's question paper so this is a very important video i would say before going for your examinations definitely at least uh, hear this video out uh, regarding the uploading of these slide decks into either the telegram channel or i uh, anywhere else uh, i'll see how much it is possible for me it is a, i am having a little bit of a time crunch uh, that is the only reason why but i will try to upload and in case i if i do upload then i will definitely leave a link to that in the description box or as a comment i'll pin that comment okay so extremely sorry about um, the material being available uh, that uh, doubt but still this video is uh, will definitely be of uh, much help to you i am sure about it let's get started so the first question or uh, one of the first things that we have to understand in this unit is how exactly managerial economics is important in your organization what exactly is the role of a managerial economist so you see um, economics is a part and parcel of the environment in which our business firms operate be it internal or external any any decision or any situation your company or your firm goes through will have an economic aspect to it because we are all people we are all living in an economy so the rules or the principles and the, and such of the economy will apply to us be it your gdp or your population growth or whatever it is your demand seasonal fluctuations anything and everything it has to deal with economics so in general what happens is with managerial economics a manager that is ourselves in the future we can use this knowledge of managerial economics at least in two ways and what are those two ways first it can give us a sense of the existing economic environment and the principles of the managerial economics will provide a framework that we can use to evaluate whether the resources that we have uh, that are coming the inputs or the factors of production are allocated efficiently within a firm or not and based on that uh, framework these economic principles that is it will help the manager to respond to various economic signals like if is there going to be a depression then what we should do is there going to be a trend reversal then what we should do is the population exploding then should we think about increasing the production things like that or if the raw materials are becoming scarce then should we think about finding or uh, should we get our r&d moving and uh, try and find out alternative uh, inputs things like that so what happens with managerial economics or a knowledge of this managerial economics a manager can increase his own or her own value as well as the value of the firm they are serving okay so that is the role of a managerial economist then uh, this chapter in this unit uh, what they are dealing with is a few of those important uh, terms these are not new terms for any of us at least in the school days we have heard of them just reiterating so whatever you know about it you can write down if a question comes like differentiate between variables and constants or partial derivatives and derivatives or where do you use derivatives where do you use partial derivatives and things like that if questions come in that manner which they have in the past you can uh, write all you know about those concepts starting from your school days whatever you remember you can write them down like for example uh, when we talk about variables and constants you can start your answer by giving uh, or writing down a simple linear equation like y is equal to a plus b uh, sorry a plus bx so in this y and x are the variables they are called variables y because their values can change while a and b are constants and why are they called constants because their values do not change some of the examples of constant that we know speed of light um, the value of pi right the gravitational constant things like that right if, if you are from the science background i was from science background that's why i 
uh, tell more about such things. So whatever uh, constants you know of that you have come up, come across, right? Throughout, you can write them down. Okay. So y is equal to a plus b x. From there, you can explain what variables are, what constants are. Now. Coming back to variables, we have two types of variables, dependent and independent. Independent variables, they are independent. They are on their own. They will change on their own. Dependent variables are dependent on these independent variables. So, their value will change in response to the changes in the dependent variables. So, in this equation which we have, y is equal to a plus b x, x is the depend independent variable whereas y is your dependent variable. X changes on its own. Changes in y happens because of changes in x. That is what is meant. Coming to derivatives and partial derivatives, again, if you have taken economics with max, also you might have come across this term. Or if you are from science background, definitely you might have come across this term. Not sure about the humanities people, might they might not have come across these things in case you did not have max as a subject. So for them, especially derivatives and partial derivatives, those are concepts in mathematics, which uh, from the branch of calculus. Okay, and these things get used mainly to what you can say they if you might have heard of it in eighth ninth and all when you had science you might have heard about speed right what is speed speed of a car speed of a train what is it it is the distance traveled with respect to time right so uh, an incremental change in speed is what an incremental change in distance with respect to time right so think uh, so this derivatives partial derivatives and all are kind of like uh, what what you can say uh, they are tools which uh, help uh, mathematicians or statisticians or economists to understand that marginal changes and all. Uh, in max, we call them as slope if you might have come across that term. Otherwise, in economics, this is the same concept that we call as marginalism. Basically, what happens is derivatives, why they are used is to find that small increase in output which has happened or even decreased that small change i should say that marginal change that's very small delta change that has happened in the output because of a change in the input if we want to find that we use derivatives and derivatives are uh, uh, the symbol which we use for derivative is a small d okay in max so it is a measure of change in a dependent variable that is our y okay in the previous equation so you can again quote that equation also if it required that dependent variable or our y because of a change in the very small change in the independent variable x okay coming to partial derivatives why we go for partial derivatives is that uh, see most of the changes or most of the things in our um, environment if we have to make an equation out of it it will definitely not be uh, y is equal to a plus bx kind of a thing okay it will not, definitely not just involve one variable one or two variables it will have a lot of variables like think for example um, the choice of a dress for a particular function how many variables will it have just assume okay so it will depend upon your mood it will depend upon where the function is it will depend upon who or the type of people you think will come for that function it will depend upon the time of that function it will depend upon the time of the year if it is a rainy season if it is summer if it is spring it if it is winter your output choices would be different okay so now itself you have listed out five variables right which will affect your choice for an outfit on any given day on what occasion what brand do you have any brand preferences do you have any category preferences do you have any occasion in mind or um, do you have any price that doesn't matter in your mind all those things right all those things variables now that is how the real situation is it is it's rarely just a one-to-one -one relationship between two variables so in that case it becomes very difficult for us to exactly understand how a change in just one variable will affect your final output and that is what you need to know as your customer as a manager right as a person from the firm you need to know so since there are a lot of things that affect the your customers okay when they decide on buying your product or not buying your product there might be a lot of factors like its availability its color its price its utility um, its shape what not right a lot lot lots and lots of things their personal uh, beliefs and attitudes or what they think about your company and lot many things um so uh, what if you are deciding to change the price but how the customer will respond to your change in price is not just uh, what you can say restricted to 
one thing right if you increase your price very slightly up or down how your customers my uh, your customers might uh, decide later on to, whether or not to buy your product at that new price range will again depend upon a lot of factors so how do we find out whether it is wise to change this price or not or whether we sh it is wise for us to change something about the product even the color combination how do we find out we need to have a uh, way right so at that time what we do is we employ a method called partial derivatives so partial derivatives also kind of work the same way as your derivatives but the only thing is that when we are trying to find out a, uh, how one particular variable will affect your final outcome then naturally what is the assumption that we will keep in mind rest everything let it remain constant correct so when you think about whether you have to pay your employees 100 rupees more every month okay whether or not that will be helpful will depend upon a lot of things the inflation rate uh, the global conditions and a lot of things right but you will have to think that every other thing remaining constant whether an increase in uh, salary or whether an increase in price or whether changing the shape or whether changing the color pattern will have a positive impact or not you will have to consider that by keeping everything else constant then only you will be able to identify how one variable out of the many variables will affect your output so at that time we use this partial derivatives and this partial derivatives while derivatives we used to represent with the small letter d this partial derivative we represent using the um, uh, what is that symbol's name it's not gamma i think delta delta symbol okay uh, greek symbol delta we use not the triangle wala delta the other one it, it is also almost uh, shaped similar to a uh, d only but a fancy letter d you can think of okay so that is a symbol which we use for representing partial derivatives and when we see that you should understand okay here you have uh, many other uh, variables that are in the picture but you are assuming all of them to be constant and that is how you are finding out that is what you should infer as a manager okay when you see somebody using partial derivatives and this is the only uh, and this is how partial derivatives are applied also so uh, it is the most commonly used one in the uh, normal world so i hope you understood the concept of derivatives and partial derivatives especially people who are not familiar with maths and mathematics concepts then another important again as i said earlier also in the beginning of this video each and every slide in this uh, slide deck is important okay so this optimization techniques have also come as a uh, as a question in our previous term and examination so what exactly is optimization technique when you think of the word optimization what comes into your mind optimize means what uh, what you can say adjust so that it is having the best fit right so that is exactly what optimization techniques also do the, it is the act of choosing that best alternative okay uh, among all the available ones uh, in the previous videos i had mentioned right if you get a gift card of say thousand rupees from amazon you will try to optimize that amount right you will not go randomly picking stuff up but naturally middle class people like me uh, we always think of how I can maximum utilize this thousand rupees. Maybe if I can get exact pinpoint thousand, I'll be very happy. At least if it is nine hundred and ninety nine rupees, I'm like okay, fine. Uh, one rupees I lost, one rupee I lost, but still. Mm. But if it is eight hundred and ninety, then you will think right. What else can I buy for this one hundred and ten rupees from this shop? Can I get something? Can I get something like that? You will think. What happens there? What actually is happening in your mind is this optimization is working. It mostly happens with us work, uh, middle class, working class people. Okay, so that is optimization technique. So there are two uh, different optimization techniques available. One is the unconstrained optimization technique, and the other is constrained optimization technique. So unconstrained optimization means there are no constraints, there are no restrictions. You can optimize according to your wish without any constraints. That is unconstrained optimization technique. It is the simplest, there are no constraints and it essentially deals with finding the global minimum or global maximum of any given function. So when we go for this unconstrained optimization technique, one of the drawbacks or one of the characteristics of such an output or such an optimization is that you will find yourself in that equilibrium state, but that equilibrium might not always be stable. Like uh, you might find that it is slowing down, it's coming to an equi equilibrium, but once it is in equilibrium, it will not be stable there. 
any small whiff of the wind can topple it out of equilibrium and it will get uh, moving again. Okay. So that's what happens in unconstrained optimization technique. Like for example, in our gift card scenario, you have booked, you have taken 890 rupees worth of things. Okay. Now you are in equilibrium. But now you found that there is something for 120 rupees. Okay. So now you will again start thinking, okay, then can I change something else from my cart and uh, accommodate this 120 rupees stuff and maybe something else by, you know, kicking out some other thing from my cart. Again, that equilibrium gets broken, right? Things like that. I hope you understand. This example is not exactly as it, uh, exactly as it is, but I just gave it to you so that you understand how that equilibrium gets broken. Then comes the constrained optimization technique, which is the most uh, real world one, where you have constraints. Like for example, if you are a vegan and you are in a shop, it's a constraint, right? Or if you are a pure vegetarian, it is a constraint, not as high as vegan, but still. If you are somebody um, like that, so those things become constraint. And real world scenarios are always constrained scenarios. So most real life situations are constrained. These constrained problems, how do we solve them then? Well, when we talk about constrained problems, what we do is we Try to change these constrained problems into unconstrained ones. And then solve it similar to your unconstrained problems. And to make constrained problems or constrained functions into unconstrained functions, we have a lot of techniques like Lagrange's multiplier technique and all are there. Um, those who are familiar with maths concepts would know. But in case you are not, just understand and just write down this word that you can use techniques like Lagrange's multiplier in your term and examination. In case you are interested to know more about such concepts, na, maybe in the future I will see if I can make videos on that coming later on in the channel. Just for increasing your uh, understanding levels of the overall concept. Because uh, one thing is that managers... Uh, techies doctors they all have one thing in common you guys have to we guys have to always keep updating ourselves uh, according to the changes right it's almost the same for all professions but uh, changes happen more quickly in our uh, domains than other domains i would say so we'll have to always keep updating ourselves so not from the term and examination point of view but just for general knowledge purpose as and how my uh, the time permits i'll try to make a video in the future then comes regression analysis. So regression analysis is not a new concept for any of us by second semester. We have learned about it in first semester in multiple topics, right? In accounting for managers also there was regression analysis. In quantitative aptitude also there was regression analysis. Now again over here we have regression analysis. Going forward into your third semester also you will find uh, yourself dealing with regression analysis. And uh, that should give you an idea, pretty good idea about how important regression analysis is. Right. So I myself have done uh, uh, videos in this our channel about regression analysis in quantitative aptitude in accounting for managers and all. So in case you want to learn more about regression analysis, I would suggest that you go back and revisit those videos. OK, so just in this video, I'll just give you a quick recap of what regression analysis is. So regression we do uh, for finding relationship between two variables. Okay, so uh, and not just whether there is a relationship or not, but more than that, we do to find out the strength of that relationship as in if there are two variables which are related to each other, if increasing one variable will increase the other or not, if it does produce a change, then yes, they are related, but how much change does it produce, on what level, in what direction? And how much of a strength does it have? Like a one unit change over here, will it produce 10 unit change over there? Maybe 0.5 unit change over there? Will that change be in the positive direction or in the negative direction? All those things we'll find out through regression analysis. So managerial economics, managerial economists also use this regression analysis as a tool to understand these economic relationships through quantitative estimations. We have linear and multilinear regression which is the most commonly used ones. And we also have the non-linear ones, which uh, are used very rarely for the complex problems. Okay, so that is regression analysis. So with that, we are coming to the end of this video. I've covered uh, almost all the topics, uh, important topics that there are in unit three. And let me reiterate each of these slides uh, were uh, previous question paper questions and their potential answers. So, I hope that you found this video useful and thank you so much and until I see you in the next video, bye-bye.